backpacking wildlife photographer. Today we're going to do a comparison of the backbone versus the drop stitch floor on the advanced elements advanced frame support. Now we're going to be doing a couple of quick tips as far as installing the backbone and then we'll be going out on the lake to do a performance comparison between the two. So we have the backbone installed. Uh, we didn't go through that process on this particular video because it was done on one of my earlier ones when I was setting up the advanced element sport for the first time. But here's the tip. If you decide the backbone is for you and you're doing your first time installation, first thing you want to do is make sure your boat is on a stand, clearing the pressure off the three inch skeg because it will bend left or right, knocking your alignment out. Now the problem with that is when you're out and you're uh, you're getting ready to launch and you set up your boat, when you're putting this in each time, the skeg is going to knock the alignment of your backbone off a little bit. So here's the tip, and I'm going to show you how to fix that so where you don't ever have alignment problems. Every time you go out, it'll be dead on. So first thing you do is put your boat on a stand, this is for the first time, and run a quick inspection, running your fingers over the backbone and see that the backbone is dead in line right here. Now the reason I have it on a stand is because, like I said, if there's pressure on this or this side, it's going to knock your backbone out of alignment. Okay, so here we go with this fantastic tip. You got to bring out this very expensive adjustment tool to make sure your alignment's done, and it's called a Sharpie pen. Now, what you want to do with this, once you know that your boat is all aligned, again, it's on stands and there's no pressure on the skeg at all, take your Sharpie pen and run guidelines down here, along the boat, on each side. So when done, it'll look something like this. Now the great thing about this is that from now on, every time that you go out and set up your backbone, even if the skeg is bent left or right, as long as you put your backbone in these alignment guides, you'll be true every single time. Okay, so with the backbone all installed, you put your, your floor in, get that up to pressure, put your seat in, uh, your foot rest bag if you have it and you're all set and ready to go. Your alignment will never be an issue anymore. So next we're going to drop in and install the drop stitch floor. Installing your drop stitch floor is no different than the floor that came with your boat. Just make sure you pull your backbone out, pull the stock floor out, and then go ahead and install uh, the drop stitch floor. Now. In your kit you'll get this adapter. This is for the the type of valve used on the drop stitch floor. Now once your floor is in, you want to fully inflate your kayak before you inflate the floor. Now once your kayak is fully inflated, now is the time to inflate your drop stitch floor. This is where you use that new drop stitch floor valve adapter. Insert it, lock it, make sure the, the valve stem is in the up position. Now this is rated from four to six pounds, so I put five in mine. And there we go. Make sure you secure the cap, lock it into place and that the O-ring is seating well. And it's about a third of a turn and it's locked. Okay, the drop stitch floor is installed and inflated to 5 PSI. Right away, I can see a serious difference in rigidity with this drop stitch floor. I was curious to see the difference in the bottom of the boat with the drop stitch floor installed versus the, the backbone. Now the backbone gives a V-hole look to the bottom, whereas you can see quite a difference I guess we'll find out in the performance mode. A 
Good morning. We're all set up, ready to go out and do these performance tests on the drop stitch versus the backbone. I'm out at one of my favorite places to go called Crooked River here in Florida. It's a great place to paddle. It interlinks with uh, several big lakes, but it's really a twisty, windy river. It's really awesome. So enjoy the performance. We'll be doing uh, mile per hour differences and all kinds of stuff like that. So let's get ready to go. Let's get out there. All right, what I'm doing now is a mile per hour check with the drop stitch floor installed. Three eight four zero oh, four one four six. I hit five mile an hour once, but I'm moving right along. What I see from the drop stitch versus the backbone, the drop stitch knows wanders more left to right than it does with the backbone on. So your tracking is a little bit looser with the drop stitch, but the comfort is phenomenal. Now we're looking at the standard paddling speed. It's not too bad. We'll see what the difference is. We'll put the backbone in and check it out. Yeah, you can see the let me point down at the nose. You can see how much it goes left and right with a standard stroke. And it's probably twice as much nose wander, I guess you could call it, <coughs> and with the backbone on. And just casual paddle, three, four, three, six, somewhere around there, which is nice. But it's uh, it's tracking pretty good. Okay, so here we go with the backbone installed in the stock floor. Let's see what we got here. Definitely not as much nose wander, but I mean, there's always some. All right, here are my speeds, as you can see, are in the 4s and 4.5s versus the 3.6s. So, <coughs> speed is impacted, but my speeds are running 4.5, so they're pretty much I'd say on an average of 4.3. Okay, let's recap this. First, we'll look at the backbone. It takes a little bit longer to set up, but it's really probably an extra minute to set it up on your setup point. Advantages, tracking and speed. There is a distinct difference between the drop stitch floor tracking and the speed difference with the backbone. Comfort wise, the drop stitch got it beat hands down. However, if you have your stock floor inflated correctly, you're not sitting on that pipe. Right now my average paddle speed is running around 4.2, 4.3, something like that. So you're gonna be, with the drop stitch floor, you'll be paddling a, a little bit slower with the same amount of effort. But, it's really not that noticeable. Nose wander, the backbone tracking has got the drop stitch beat. But you're actually adding a complete V hole versus a channeled flat bottom. So there you have it, folks. 
you like my review, subscribe to my channel. I do a lot of product reviews on camera gear, inflatable kayaks, accessory items for kayaking, and paddling spots. Great places to paddle. And this is one of them. Well, if you like my channel, subscribe. We'll see you out there.